What is up, Bruin Bible listeners? This is your host, Will Decker. We've got a very special sponsor to lead us off. We got Bet Online. Bet Online remains your number one source for all your baseball betting needs this season as it is officially opening day. Get analysis of every play, prop, and point at Bet Online. You'll find the latest odds, bracket contests, team matchups, and game trends at Bet Online as a whole. Uh, Bet Online is your baseball, basketball, uh, football headquarters this season. Head to our website today and use our mobile device to sign up and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Be sure to use your promo code, uh, believe, to receive your bonus pay. Bet a line where the game starts. Now to the Bruin Bible. What is up and welcome to a brand new edition of the Bruin Bible. Will Decker, your host, familiar face to my right. Uh, he was kind enough to join the madman, the man, the myth, the legend. You know this guy. Madman, what is going on, brother? We happen to both be at the Lakers game this past weekend. Unfortunately, we weren't able to run into one another, but plenty of times to be had in the future. And uh, I know we got a lot of hanging coming up here soon. So, Yes, sir. Absolutely. No, it was uh, one of the many tragedies of the last, uh, you know, 96 hours for me, Thriller. Uh, you know, you and I not being able to link up at Game 3. And then, of course, the outcome of Game 3. And then... Going back for game four, and then, of course, the outcome for game four. So, you know, nothing quite like uh, losing in a, in a playoff series, and uh, especially, you know, it, getting swept is a whole other animal. So, you know, I, I would have loved for even a gentleman sweep thriller, you know, just make it 4-1 gentleman sweep, but uh, the rude sweep is sometimes a bit of a challenge. But uh, such is life, and excited to be talking about the beloved Bruins. The beloved Bruins is right, and it's a big, big week for UCLA football. We've gotten two commitments already in the fold, and we got a big weekend of recruiting visitors. Another five-star coming to campus, Madman, Elijah Rushing, the yep. defensive end out of Tucson, South Point Catholic out in Arizona, and just a couple other big names among this fold. And it got me thinking, uh, we want to break down these commitments for you guys. We want to break down the visitors coming in. I just got a wide variety of reasons why the Bruins are starting to just kind of get back into the hearts of these recruits coming up, specifically in Los Angeles, but even the surrounding areas as well. So it's a, it's an exciting time to be a Bruin. We got to jump into the commitments first. Isaiah Patterson, six foot two, two hundred twenty pound uh, linebacker from Washington State, committed to UCLA today. And you know, on the surface, it's a three star prospect. It's a guy that. I think a lot of programs look at if you're going with the USC's or, you know, kind of the snobby institutions that we know of, <laughs> they're going to go, Hey, that's only a three star. That's not a great guy. I actually think the opposite. I think this guy's uh, recruiting uh, trajectory was only going upwards. UCLA capitalized on an offer. We had Ken Norton jr. Meet with this kid and they stayed in local contact. He actually picked up an Oregon offer and chose us over the Oregon ducks a team that Dan Lanning is manning right now. And, you know, you know about his defenses and what he was able to build at Georgia. How big of a commitment is this for the linebacking room moving forward, knowing that we're going to lose a lot of the linebackers off of the 2023 squad heading into 2024? No, well, it's definitely a big pickup. You mentioned it, obviously, the likes of uh, Muasau and, you know, Carl Jones and, and others, you know, especially in that sort of hybrid front seven type of role. And I think with Isaiah, Will, you bring up a really interesting point that I think a lot of the casual fans, sometimes, you know, it's hard to sort of recognize. We're very preconditioned to look at the stars. You know, we're going to go on three, 247. How many stars does this kid have? And I think you brought up such a great point about the trend and the trajectory. Because one thing we have to understand with these young men and these great prospects is some of them will have a major growth spurt at 16, some of them at 17, some of them at 18. So some of them are going to peak at different moments. So just because a kid is a five-star, it, it shows obviously all of these stars essentially are potential. 
But what it's really showing is that, hey, the potential, the, the sign of potential, the proxies for potential have been revealed earlier in, in that person's life, just in terms of growth spurt, strength, jump, uh, jumping up, all of those types of things. And in the case of Isaiah, he's a little bit of a late bloomer. And how many times have we seen late bloomers come into a program, be incredibly successful, and then have really decorated careers in the NFL? And so to me, the trajectory is so much more important than the actual star itself, because the trajectory is showing where the prospect is going. The star is sort of a fixed moment in time. And in the case of Isaiah, you can see that trajectory really growing over time given the fact that the likes of the Oregons and others were pursuing him as well. So I think this is a huge get for UCLA. One, to sort of fix the depth situation in 2024 and be able to reload, if you will. But then two, I think as a prospect itself, the best is yet to come. And he's sort of ripe for explosive growth once he lands in Westwood. Yeah, and it's a it's a great get. Isaiah Patterson really going to make a difference, especially next year. When you're losing the likes of Muwasa, you're losing the K. Madronos, the Carl Jones. I personally believe Oladeja is going to have such a promising year next year that he's probably not going to be on the team next year, despite maybe some eligibility allowing him to play for UCLA. I think he's going to be like a day two draft prospect. It feels that time. way, doesn't it, Will? I mean, after seeing him live, I mean, just what a specimen he is. And so all the more reason where Patterson's going to really get an opportunity to make an impact next year. Yeah, and there's like three NFL guys that just stood out to us at spring practice. It was Liatu Latu, it was J. Michael Sturdivant, and it was Oladeja. Those were the three guys where you go, those guys look like they're playing for an NFL team and they came back. It's like 21 Jump Street. Like they are there just to be like blend in with the guys before they go back to the NFL. So those guys are the truth when it comes to it. Thriller, I definitely had my ice cube moment with Oladijo, you know, where you're, and, and with the, with the classmates, remember in 21 Jump Free, it's like, how old are you? What are you, 40? You know, I mean, you know, so with Oladijo, I mean, just the specimen, that young man does not look like he's a, he's a college kid. I mean, that was, you know, seeing him in close proximity to DK Metcalf when Metcalf was on the sidelines, obviously shout out to DK Metcalf, Will Decker's favorite player of all time. Um, and, you know, seeing the two of them sort of comparable in terms of size really just tells you all you need to know about Oladijo. And he's just a special, special guy, man. And it's, it's really fun to have him a part of the program. Uh, you know, speaking of people getting added to the program, he wasn't the only commitment Isaiah Patterson was of the week. We had six foot five offensive tackle also from the Washington state, Mr. Marquise Taylor Thorpe committed to UCLA and this guy is a very promising prospect, and it shows how much that Tim Drevno is pouring in to the offensive line in terms of recruiting. We have five official commits right now, and three of them are on the offensive line for UCLA moving forward. You and I have talked at length about how this line group looks like a little bit thin, you know, when it's coming into, into uh, spring camp. Coming into next year, they're going to have a lot of bodies out there, which should be really, really encouraging for UCLA moving forward. This guy's a talented prospect. Another guy that, you know, I think the trajectory of his recruitment was only going up. He had offers from USC, Tennessee, Oregon, Stanford. And you know how Stanford is one of the key cogs when it comes to the offensive line on the West Coast. Give me your take on Taylor Thorpe committing because, I mean, you pair him with the Mark Schroller and Joshua Glanz of this group. This is a huge bunch, man. And Marquise Taylor Thorpe, Six foot five, he's the shortest of the three commitments. So these are some big, big bodies coming to Westwood next year, Mad Men. No, it's really exciting, Will, in terms of just the, the emphasis and the philosophy of starting with the offensive line from the ground up. I think, Drevno, we know what he brings to the table as a coach, one of the best position coaches in all of college football. And over the last couple of years, he's really had to rely on that transfer portal and, you know, year over year, there's been a tremendous amount of turnover. And I don't want to call it patchwork offensive line, but we've really leaned in on that transfer portal and getting kind of guys one year at a time. This now gives him the opportunity to develop a critical mass of prospects straight out of high school. And, you know, going through his program, his regimen, his philosophy, his tactics, and, and being able to be in the system for multiple years I think is going to pay massive dividends, especially when you look at 
what the bread and butter of the Chip Kelly offense is, which is that zone running game, and the fact that now that we're headed towards the Big Ten, it's really going to come down to being sound in the trenches. And I think that Torp Taylor, you mentioned it in terms of the offers, Will. I mean, just so impressive, the likes of Oregon, Tennessee, USC, Oklahoma. I mean, these are, you know, big time blue chip programs. And for him to pick UCLA shows, I think, the belief that he has in Drebno, in Chip Kelly, in where this program is going, and just how much potential there is now when you combine that UCLA brand with the Big Ten brand and that style of ball. Yeah, and just ask Antonio Maffi how he feels about Drevno making him an NFL draft pick after one year playing on the offensive line. So a lot of encouragement there. And then you couple that with after these two commitments, we might have the biggest recruiting weekend UCLA has had probably since Dante Moore came out to campus. Elijah Rushing, the number eight overall player in the country, going to be on campus for UCLA, a big-time deal. And what was just found out this morning, uh, what I tweeted out, Cameron Jones, the running back from Bosco, coming to campus. And I saw the size of this kid, and it just brought me back to one of my all-time favorites, Charbonnet. This guy is 6'3", 220 pounds as a senior in high school, playing for one of the premier programs in the area. These are two of some gems coming to UCLA this weekend. And just having these notable players on campus – it just shows that UCLA is back, man. And it's fun to have these conversations with you, knowing that the best is yet to come for UCLA. What does this weekend mean for UCLA moving forward, knowing that they're able to get another top 10 prospect on campus? No, it's huge, Will, because, you know, the fact that, you know, these prospects are taking, you know, uh, these trips out to UCLA, it's starting to show that UCLA is in that final five, that final seven for these prospects. And you have to do it a few times with these prospects, but they talk. They're all friends on different sort of amateur circuits. They're all buddies on social media. Word gets around pretty quickly. And even if maybe nothing hits this weekend, you know, God willing, we go two for two. But even if it's one for two or even over two, it's it's a step in the direction where when you have enough of these visits, guys are going to start popping and coming to UCLA. And that's how you really build that talent pipeline. And for me, Will, it's so exciting because so much of the narrative the last couple of years has been UCLA doesn't want to recruit, you know, traditional players right out of high school. It's all about the transfer portal. And you have to use that transfer portal as that base, given some of the challenges it is to get into UCLA. But now once you have that base established, Chip has always been a guy where if he wants a certain type of player, he will be very aggressive. And these two certainly fit that mold. And I think stepping on campus, you know, give UCLA the opportunity to sell itself. When you look at the football center and you look at, you know, the the Wasserman Center, you look at the facilities there, you look at the campus, you look at the weather, you look at the neighborhood, you just look at the spirit and the vibe on campus. You sort of factor in the academics, throw in the LA media market and nil, I mean, entering in down Westwood Boulevard, you see the giant Wasserman building, you know, right across the street on Wilshire and and knowing what that means in terms of nil opportunities and marketing opportunities. So it's an opportunity to really package, not just the campus, the neighborhood around campus, the business opportunities. And then of course, this young critical mass of coaches, you know, just the energy and the vibrancy that a Deshaun Foster and a Jerry Neuheisel and DeAnton Lynn and, you know, the others are all bringing to the table here, I think, and Ken Norton Jr., of course, is not as young as those guys, but just the energy. You know, you have the right support structure. You have the right campus. You have the academics. You have the marketplace. Sell it. You know, sell it sort of in an integrated fashion. I wish the Lakers were still playing because it would be a great opportunity to go to a Laker game as well. For these recruits, that's a huge selling point. I know SC uses that very well, and UCLA could have done the same. Uh, But I think there's really an opportunity to show what an L.A. lifestyle is all about with the school as decorated as UCLA. And I narrowed it down to six reasons why I think UCLA is, you know, back in these recruiting circles and able to get the likes of a five-star to come to campus. And I want to hear your takes after I kind of run through them. Sure. Uh, number one, it's just an obvious reason they're competitive again. 17 wins in the last two years, two bowl game selections. 
any kid wants to go play for a competitive program. So I think that is by far and away the number one reason that they are getting guys on campus. Two, this cannot be undersold. The Big Ten move is huge. And I remember we talked about we're both big 30 for 30 fans. And, you know, I remember Bill McCartney, his kind of pitch to these L.A. kids was like, hey, come here. We're going to be competitive and your parents are going to be able to see you on TV every single Saturday, you know, coming in here. I can't even find the Pac-12 network, Madman, and I worked there for two years. Like it is impossible to get connected with Pac-12 football. They don't even have a deal in structure right now. You couple with the media mass that is Big Ten football and combine that with the price tag that they're getting from everything I've read, according to boardroom, it's an extra 65 to 75 million. It didn't not only took UCLA out of debt, but they're allocating at least an extra 11 or 12 million a year to student athlete resources, only enhancing the pitch that they have for one of the best campuses within the entire country. Number three, you kind of alluded to this elite position coaches. If you're a linebacker, why wouldn't you want to go play for Ken Norton Jr.? I mean, this guy is one of the best in the entire country, maybe the best in football, period. I know a lot of NFL teams that would want him there. Deshaun Foster, track record speaks for itself. My money, the best running back coach in all of college football, not even close. Tim Drevno, we talked about it, the line that he made his move on there. And then you have Chip Kelly, a guy that knows what it takes to get to the NFL. I think a huge reason why Dante Moore came. So just the individual coaching you can get from some of these masterminds. Uh, number five, draft picks. We are producing players to the NFL, Madman. 11 total draft picks over the last two years from yep. UCLA to the NFL. That is the most in the Pac-12 over those last two years. And then you couple that with the Los Angeles market and how you know we have been a sleeping giant for so long, given the market that we have. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, you, you want to play for a quarterback. You want to play for a guy that – has the pedigree to take it to the next level, and that's Dante Moore, being a five-star quarterback that brings in the great linemen, that brings in the great skill position players. Oh, you guys have got a great quarterback? Now we got a chance to go win some serious ball games. So I think those six reasons are why I believe UCLA is, you know, you know, picking up right where they left off at the end of the 90s, which is a beautiful sign moving forward. Do you agree with those opinions, and would you add anything else to that? Yeah, well, I mean, I think, you know, you hit it on, you know, so so well. I think there's a couple of points in what you said where I think a couple of the points matter even more than some of the other points. I think there's a hierarchy to all the points. It was exhaustive for sure. You, you covered it all perfectly. I think I really like that you mentioned the Bill McCartney reference in, in terms of 30 for 30 because everything that McCartney was doing back when CU was in the Big 12, he was basically saying two things. Back then, he said, look, that was a time when Nebraska and Oklahoma were just dominating the Big 12. And he said, look, you get the opportunity to do two things here. First, you get to come to Boulder, Colorado. And he used to sort of share the campus with the recruits and say, look at this beautiful view. Look at these mountains. Look at this area. Would you rather be here or would you rather be in Lincoln, Nebraska, or would you rather be in Norman, Oklahoma? And obviously Boulder won out. It's one of the most beautiful places in all the country. And then the second thing he said was, do you want to just be another number on the long assembly line of prospects and, and kind of pedigree that those schools have had over the years? Or do you want to come here and truly build something and be a legend for building something? And I think when you look at where UCLA is today, on the cusp of Pac-12 to Big Ten and where they stand as a football program, I think both of those points hold so true. Because the first point is you get the opportunity. You talked about the Big Ten move. I, I, I sort of had a really in-depth conversation last week with someone in the athletic department talking about the Big Ten move. And you, you said it so well. It was a $35 million difference for sure. And it's, it's a huge uh, you know, $65 million difference from the 35 that they were getting uh, with the Pac-12. It's a huge upgrade. But now you get the best of both worlds because you get to play in the Big Ten. You get to play in those marquee games against those great iconic teams, the Ohio States, the Michigans, the Penn States, the Wisconsins, and the USC's. But you don't have to live there. You don't have to deal with the weather there. So would you rather live in Los Angeles or would you rather live in 
Ann Arbor, Michigan, or Columbus, Ohio, or Madison, Wisconsin. All beautiful places, but six months out of the year, you're freezing your tail off, and here you are in paradise. So that's point one. And then point two, look, the Ohio States, the Michigans, even the USC's to a certain extent, those are sort of talent factories. You will be one of many. You come to UCLA and be the reason that this program reaches back to elite status. That's how you become a legend. That's how you're legendary. That's how you're immortalized. That's how you're never forgotten. And so the parallel between what McCartney was selling back in the early 90s and what Chip has as at his disposal to sell here in the early 2020s, it, there's a staggering analogy there, which makes me really excited about the future. And then the other pieces, Will, I think that's really key is the NFL pipeline. And at the end of the day, to see that path and say, look, 11 guys, like you mentioned over the last two years, are, are in the NFL. But not just those 11 guys. Look at all the guys that are getting invites from teams as undrafted free agents. I mean, it's 2x that. It's 3x that over the last two years. So you get the opportunity to live out your dream from an NFL standpoint. And you have guys with true NFL chops. Chip Kelly, Ken Norton Jr., guys that have played, guys that have been part of some of the most dynastic teams in the history of the sport. So I think when you put those two elements together, and then when you couple it with the academic piece, the education piece of how you sort of round out, that's the, the piece that, that sells mom and dad and, and the uncles and the aunties that, that this, their, their son or daughter or niece or nephew are going to be taken care of at a place like UCLA. I think relying on those three things is really massive. And I think it, it, there's so much to be excited about. So much to be excited about. And, you know, we've been on the UCLA wagon for a while. I'm going to say this thing's going to get pretty full. So if you're going to jump, do it soon, because this is going to be a, a couple of very fun years with this coaching staff intact, with some of these recruits coming in, with Dante Moore eventually leading the helm, maybe as soon as this year. You know, it's going to be really, really fun. And to our Bruin faithful that have been there in the hard times, the people that matter the most, in this fan base. We've got nothing but love and respect for you guys. We just want to make this show as good as we possibly can each and every week. We will keep you updated with everything Bruins, making sure you are liking and subscribing to the Bruin Bible podcast and the UCLA LAFB channel. We got you covered all off season. And for this Friday, we actually got Madman alluded to it earlier. We got on three's very own JD Pakel coming in. And we're going to be talking about the PAC 12 UCLA's chances to take the Pac-12, how they're faring and recruiting, things of that nature. So we'll be building upon this conversation moving forward. Madman, any last parting thought before we get off uh, the Bruin Bible for our UCLA faithful, my man? You know, Will, it's, it's, this is, I think, the first year where I think the optimism for this team is so high at this stage in the year. I mean, think about where we are right now in May. We saw a collection of six weeks of practices where we saw a tremendous amount of depth of talent. I think the receiving room is as rich as it's ever been, certainly in the last two decades. We've talked about depth at running back. We've talked about the other skill positions. We've talked about the studs on defense. Think about where we were a little bit this time last year. Still reeling a bit from Dylan Gabriel coming and then going DTR back really excited there, but there were some concerns about just, you know, are we not, is it going to be kind of more of the same? There were still some concerns about the coaching staff. Is it more of the same and, and some holes uh, from a talent standpoint. So we have really sort of elevated the opportunity uh, that's presenting in front of ourselves here going into this year. Very excited about that. And then I think there's a lot to be reflective of, this is the last year for UCLA in the Pac-12. And for being one of the founding members of this conference to go from Pac-8 to Pac-10 to Pac-12 now, this is going to be a really special year. And I think we really need to savor the, the game against Cal and savor the game against Stanford and some of the other uh, Pac-12 teams that we've come to sort of have these fun budding rivalries with over the years. Uh, because it's going to be sort of a very new set of teams and rivalries going into next year. So I think there's a lot of optimism for the future this year, which is so exciting. But then I think this year also represents an opportunity to look back as well from a nostalgia perspective, a memory standpoint, 
And so I think this year is really just a, a perfect convergence of both of those things. And let's hope the Bruins go out the right way in this conference, you know, making a run for this conference title, which I totally believe that they're going to be in, in arguably the deepest quarterback year this conference has ever had. I think UCLA is going to be right there uh, in end of November, early December, vying for a conference title. And God help me if we beat Utah week four, because we are going to at least play for the Pac-12 championship, in my opinion. So if we get through Utah week four, we beat them last year. We've got a chance to really get this locomotive rolling in the right direction. Madman, thank you for coming on. As always, Bruin Bible, we are officially out. Greatest fans on the planet. Let's keep it up this offseason and keep this thing rolling. Fours up, ladies is up Bruin Bible listeners. We have another advertisement for you. We are so lucky to be sponsored by the great people at Athletic Greens. Uh, I started taking Athletic Greens specifically because I was lacking energy, lacking focus throughout the day, and needed some special pick-me-up ingredients to make things happen in my life. Athletic Greens has done just that. I've become absolutely addicted to the process. It has over 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source ingredients, probiotics, adaptogens to make your life easier uh, by doing this during the day. I like to take it to start my mornings off. I like to do it before a workout. It makes you feel energized, focused, and just have a lot more energy throughout the day than I typically expected. But right now, is the, it's the time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. Uh, that's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. Uh, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to be give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash LAFB. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash LAFB to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance athletic greens a game changer when it comes to your health and your focus and your mindset